Good morning and welcome to part one of Merrill Group's webinar series on bearing life. My name is Catherine Garrett and I will be our moderator for this event. Our presenters today are Sean Stern and Ty Huser. Sean has over 25 years of experience installing power transmission and motion control applications mechanically and electrically, 15 of which have been at Morel Group where he is currently a senior product manager. Ty Huser brings 23 years of sales engineering experience in fluid power, mechanical and control systems to his current role as product manager at Morel Group. Today, Sean and Ty use their unique and tenured experience to present this webinar on bearing life. Before we start, I would like to focus your attention on your dashboard. Here you'll find some resources to download for further information, and we would love to hear from you. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the broadcast. Please use the chat if you have any questions, and I will ask Sean and Ty on your behalf. A recorded version of this webinar will be available on Morel Group's news page later this week. And with that, I'll pass the mic over to Sean Cern. Sean? All right, I wanted to let everybody know that I've completed a series of self-diagnostic tests and national polling to determine that I am the number one mechanical distributor motion specialist in North America. A title I don't take lightly, but uh, that makes Ty Huser number two. Sorry, Ty. No, no offense taken, Sean. It is an honor to work with the best in the business. Thanks, Ty, because actually I moved you up to number two. I'm going to leave you at number two instead of dropping you to number five now that you said that. So uh, by coming to this webinar, can we go to the next slide, um, Kat? By coming to this webinar, you guys get, for no charge, our personal email address, which you'll see on, our, on the screen there. You'll get these at the end of the webinar, too, and our email address, too. You can find um, our contact information, I think, on our website, too. Or uh, if you LinkedIn friend us, we'll friend you back, and you can find us that way, too. And uh, we'll be more than happy to help with bearing applications or any motion applications that you guys need help with. Uh, Merle has a full service design engineering team at your service. Uh, we've had a, a line card uh, that's comp comprised of the machine and motion control industry's most trusted brands. And we lead off with uh, Bosch Rexroth and others are Sick Intelligence and Emerson Aventix. Uh, we are your engineering partner. Uh, we are also a systems integrator and a value added distributor. So when I was 13 years old, Fletch came out the movie with uh, Chevy Chase. And if you haven't seen it, he is an LA Times reporter is uh, posing as different people to gather intelligence for his story. And in one scene, he's pretending to be an airplane mechanic, and he says, come on, guys, it's all ball bearings these days. So Morel conducted a survey across the known civilized world, and only 2.6% of all people actually know what a ball bearing is. Actually, if you ask most of my family, they don't know either. And only 1.3% actually knows what a ball bearing does. What is a bearing? A bearings allow for motion while holding a load position, a load bearing position. Bearings allow for parts to roll around each other instead of against each other. They that gets me excited, reduce... but it shouldn't. Excuse me? That gets me excited. Bearings get me excited. Bearings reduce the friction between moving metal parts and Bearings reduce stress and allow for greater energy efficiency while increasing machine life. There are many types of different rolling element bearings using balls. On the screen, there's just four of them listed there, the most common. And there are many types of roller bearings also. And the slide lists four, including needle roller bearings. Yeah, with respect to linear bearings, uh, you'll see three main types. You'll see profiled rail bearings, which is uh, the most precise. They use balls and rollers. You'll see a less precise but more economical version using balls on precision shafting in the middle there. You may recognize this as the brand Thompson. And on the right there, you'll see a combination of uh, 
economics and precision kind of in the middle of the two, which is the cam follower version. Morel sells versions of all three of these. So bearings are in a lot of different things. You'll find bearings all over the place. These are just a few examples of them. You'll find them in wheels and engines and spindles. With, it, with respect to a lot of the Morel products, they will actually have rotary bearings built into them. So our biggest product line of bearings by itself is the linear bearing product line. Morel sells millions of dollars of profiled rail and runner blocks every year. We actually stock a million dollars of inventory called our Sweet 16, and we can achieve the fastest cut to length rail delivery of anybody uh, pretty much anywhere, especially in the Great Lakes region. So you'll see Morel's Sweet 16 stocking program on our website. You can uh, type in the Morel group with the forward slash Sweet 16 and jump right to a page that has all the cash the CAD models, all the information you need on Sweet 16. And um, we sell a ton of this uh, every year and every actually every week. Uh, when it comes to bearing theories and application, uh, when it comes to the physics of bearings, it's, it's the same, literally the same theories for linear bearings, ball bearings, roller bearings. It's just applying them um, to the different applications. So You'll find you'll find linear bearing applications across all these processes listed on your screen. So I'm going to say them really fast: milling, grinding, cutting, polishing, routing, water jetting, welding, machine loading, part assembly, pressing, heat staking, injection molding, robot positioning, testing, and I'm sure there's a ton that we missed. In many cases, you'll find uh, a ball screw in the in the linear guide systems uh, that will uh, be moving the axis. Uh, ball ball screws are very similar to thrust bearings with a helix that allows for high thrust capacity, and the circuit provides the forward motion. Uh, the sa the same bearing life theories apply to ball and roller screws. You'll see the examples there on the screen with all kinds of ball screws. All right, we're done. Next. So now that we've got through the introductions, and I, I'm assuming everybody already knows what bearings are, but you kind of have to do the setup. We're ready for the, the juicy part of our presentation. Basically, do you want a six month or 120 month bearing life? Why are bearings failing? Um, take it away, Ty. What are the top reasons I think you're next. That's your oh, choice. I, my, I missed the design factors. I, I, I got all excited for a second here. Actually, we, we've kind of broken this up in the in the three different categories for design. So you got the design factors um, that can, if you don't design bearings properly, you're gonna fail. You see all the, we'll go over some of these uh, different things. Environmental factors is the second one. Um, so the environment can fail your bearing. And then uh, improper installation too can fail your bearing. Now it's ready for this. So what are the top reasons bearings fail in the whole wide world? Drum roll, please. Da -da -da -da. Bearing contamination uh, and 47%. And that is typically due to poor sealing, poor maintenance, and some environmental issues. And ranking at number two there is disassembly. This is a catastrophic failure uh, that typically will occur due to some of these other factors. Uh, number three is incorrect machine tolerancing or improper installation. In other words, that's your bearing misalignment. Um, at fourth place is insufficient lubrication and the last three there all tied at 5%. You've got uh, corrosion um, due to moisture typically, and then there's a crash uh, that occurs, and then a category which is all miscellaneous, which includes over too fast or vibration, um, electrical arcing, uh, some of the damage that could occur to the cage. 
uh, the bearing cage. Now let's uh, start with some design issues that are important to understand. Uh, the first is the static load capacity. All the bearing manufacturers out there will have a static load capacity listed in their catalog. Too often people use this number uh, to start in designing their bearing. Uh, but, you know, if you're moving your bearing, you're cycling um, the bearings, um, it is a, uh, I'm sorry, let me, but if you're cycling your bearings at loads with even 20% of that static capacity, uh, the result will be very, very fast metal fatigue. We will talk um, more about that in a minute, but to keep Did you it say simple, metal fatigue, Ty? Did you say metal fatigue? I did. Did you mean metal fatigue you? Yes, fatigue That's you. What That's what I thought. So to keep this simple, the static load capacity that's in a catalog, it is the load limit uh, that occur that, that exists that will create permanent indentations into the raceways. So if you, so that that number is really just tells you um, the when you damage the ball in the raceways. You can see that in the picture actually. Yep, yep, right there. The he's got three of them right on there. the opposite side of what is supposed to be a brain. <laughs> Are you, you're not much of an artist, Sean. I know. I'm, I tried my best. Now, the basic dynamic capacity. This is what is really should be used when you're designing bearings because bearings are dynamic. They're not static, they're moving. So this is used actually, it's not just a straight rating. It's actually used in the bearing life equation that estimates how many cycles you can go before you hit metal fatigue and you start failing. So typically where you kind of want to be as a thumb, a thumb like just a, a, a quick rule is kind of below the 15% of the basic dynamic capacity is what your equivalent load should be. If you if you have really low duty cycle, you might be able to go higher than that. But especially for high duty cycles, you don't want that. So the reason why bearings fail from metal fatigue is the varied loading in bearings, and all bearings are cycling the rolling elements through very a varied loading cycle. Um, so it's really unavoidable. If you're using a bearing uh, with rolling elements, they're going to be cycling through very low loading, and eventually you're going to run through metal fatigue. So the trick is to pick a bearing that won't that has an acceptable bearing life. I was going to say won't fail, but they're, they're going to fail. So you want one that has an, an acceptable bearing life. But what I don't have in my notes over here is that if it's a very, very low um, load, with respect to the metal, the basic dynamic capacity, you can get an infinite life where you won't hit metal fatigue. So here's some very loading and rotary bearings. You'll see as it goes through the cycle, it goes from unloaded positions to slightly loaded positions to fully loaded positions, and then back to unloaded positions. So that's where your cycles looks like in rotary bearings. In linear bearings, the cycle's a little bit different, but you're still going from unloaded sections to fully loaded sections. And in the in the recirculation piece, which this picture shows, it's it's cycling into um, a transition area. But you're getting very loading in linear bearings too, and you'll hit metal fatigue failure on the rolling elements and raceways as well. So, I mean, everything that's going through very loading is going to fail due to the metal fatigue. Bolts on a chair, cranks on bicycles, pressurized oil pipelines. I didn't want to have to bring this up, but like the easy example is a paper clip when you bend it back and forth. It's kind of cliche and I didn't want to bring it up, but it's very easy to understand. So upon approaching your metal fatigue failure, a, a little crack will, will form then it'll start growing and then you'll get a fracture and it will break. And that's what it looks like when you break your raceways due to metal fatigue failure. 
So the bearing life equation requires actually an equivalent loading, an, an equivalent load that you plug into the calculation and you get your bearing life. And this actually takes a combination of the radial loads, the axial loads, and the moment loads. It puts it into an equation. You get an equivalent load. You put that into the bearing life calculation, and you basically can estimate the life of the bearing. So all three of these must be considered in the, in the design. And when you have a single rotary bearing, uh, it will be the one that is most at risk of having issues due to moment loading or a tilt. For a linear bearing, the equivalent load is utilizing the pitch, yaw, and roll. And if you have a single rail, it will be also at most risk of having issues due to the moment loading with a single rail. Speed is also a consideration that should be factored in into, into your sizing. Uh, ball bearings usually have a higher speed uh, rating than uh, roller bearings. Uh, roller bearings tend to skew at high speeds. Um, uh, the rotary bearings are measured in RPM. Uh, and uh, if you put a cage around that rotary bearing, it will increase the speed also. Um, angular contact ball bearings have the highest speed ratings. For rotary bearings. Uh, speed in uh, linear bearings is measured in feet per second and meters per second. Uh, just like uh, rotary bearings, balls will have a higher speed rating than the rollers. One thing to know is that uh, some of the manufacturers out there uh, put a cage around their uh, balls and in in profile rails. That does not increase the speed or the load ratings in, in linear bearings at all. Basically, the cage just lowers the noise. Um, one of our competitors, THK, uses a cage to retain the balls. Uh, Bosch Rexroth does not have to have a cage to retain the balls. Um, this allows uh, for us to put a full complement of balls in our bearing because the cage takes up room. Um, so our dynamic capacities are higher than uh, THK. Um, the um, to increase uh, speed capacity, um, you know, beyond the three meters per second and the five meters per second, we do have a ceramic ball that we can go up to 10 meters per second. Oh, Ty, I'm supposed to give you a full compliment. You're doing a great job, man. Yes, we okay. have a full compliment. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first compliment today. <laughs> That's the first, com I gave you another compliment. I said you were number two. Oh, two compliments. <laughs> Thank you. I'm full of compliments. Okay, anyway, um, I've lost my slide number. What slide am I on time? 27. 27. Oh, so I don't feel like we're on slide 27. Yep. Oh, really? Okay. So I guess we're in precision because um, with most rotary bearings, an off-the-shelf rotary bearing, it's a commodity and it's made to very high precision. So unless you're using an instrumentation, you probably don't have to worry about the precision of a rotary bearing that you're buying, even from like Granger or Masumi or any of them guys. But with linear bearings, it's a little bit different. They already start at a very high precision. So a general automation linear bearing will start at like a 40 micron accuracy, uh, which is pretty precise. I think like 90 or 95% of all the linear bearings Morel cells is just a general automation linear bearing at the 40 micron rating. Now you can get down to two to three microns if you want to pay for it. And you've got to consider or you want to consider or make sure you don't miss it, the combination of the precision on the rail and the precision on the runner block. You'll get a combined precision for the two of those. So if you use a really sloppy runner block and a very precise rail, you'll uh, you'll equal out to a higher precision than sloppy rail, sloppy runner block. Now, this other thing on your screen that says the, it says uh, Rexorth, which is a typo, it should say Rexroth, a Rexroth HP load system. Um, this, this load zone entry system, which is called HP, and what does HP mean? We have no idea what HP means. It, it might mean high performance. Nobody ever can come up with the acronym. But what it actually, it's, it's, it's a designation for the system that slowly introduces the rolling elements into the load zone so that you don't get a quick 
compression on the entry and on the exit, it just doesn't pop into free state um, and give you a lot of vibration. So this patented system does a couple things. It significantly, it significantly reduces the chatter and the vibration. And it also, um, it also gives you actually additional load capacity. So your bearing lengths are longer. Oh, I guess one other thing to um, note is that uh, for precision, uh, balls will deflect more than rollers. So if you have balls, they're not going to be as rigid as a roller. So roller bearings are more rigid and more precise. And it's also important to note that if you introduce preload into your rolling elements, you'll get more rigidity, more precision, but it will uh, reduce the bearing life and it will add drag to your system. A lot of uh, designers will overlook uh, their lubrication system until um, they start installing the machine, uh, which in many cases is too late. Um, many rotary bearings that are on the market now are already lubed for life, so you don't have to worry about those. But I am proud, very proud to announce that Rex Roth has doubled the profile linear ball bearing lubrication interval from used to be 10 million meters and now it is at 20 million meters. So every 20 million meters, will, you need to re-lube. Uh, and a lot of times that's a lube for life uh, scenario there, but there, on the other hand, the rollers, which has more friction, uh, does require more frequent lubrication. Oh. That music's for our surreptitious advertising plug. Ty, can you give our advertising plug? <laughs> Guess what? Morel sells Graco automatic lubrication systems that we can help you design the lube systems at the same time or right after, you know, we do, we just help you design a uh, the bearing system. So don't forget the loop. All right, sealing and environment. Uh, many bearings, actually, a lot of rotary bearings don't come with seals. So then the end user needs to design their own sealing systems. With most of the Morel products, rotary bearings that are in there, motors and pumps, uh, they, they do have shields and seals already in them. In terms of our linear bearings, they come standard with end seals and longitudinal seals. So you don't have to worry about that, especially with all the Sweet 16 uh, linear bearings that are in stock. And uh, it's important to check chemical compatibility if you have some harsh chemicals around. If you need some low drag, we can uh, either remove the seals or give you a labyrinth seal or give you a felt seal. Corrosive environments. Uh, it is very important to consider that when picking out your material choice on your bearings. Uh, ideally, we like to uh, recommend a, a thin, dense chrome in the catalog. Our catalogs will call that TDC, or some people will say that, but a thin, dense chrome coating can be used to protect the steel uh, without lower, lowering the ratings. Uh, we use the same rail, send it out, get it chrome plated. Rexroth does that. And it, it doesn't, uh, it only extends the lead time maybe a couple weeks. But that is a really, really good option. Um, and it's not that a, uh, much of an adder. Uh, but if necessary, um, some places they, they need stainless steel. So we do also offer a 400 series stainless steel that can be specified. Um, also, um, you've got to watch temperature ratings, um, extreme high and low temperatures. Uh, we have optional greases and, and seals to accommodate that. Um, the, uh, the grease compatibility also that you're going to be using needs to be considered um, to make sure it does work with our seals and, and the product. Uh, that's to just keep you out of the bind in the long run. So the more information about the application, the better that we can help. And by the way, before we go to the next slide, one note on temperatures is the hardness of the raceways will uh, be tempered at about 400 uh, degrees. So um, it's important to know that. And then if there's plastic in there, uh, it might only be able to go up to, um, I think those are rated to like 90 to 100 Celsius. 
400 degrees Fahrenheit, 90 to 100 Celsius, just to confuse you guys, just because I know those numbers. Installation. So, I mean, really with installation, uh, the, the misalignment is probably the biggest thing to pay attention to. So, if you have uh, vertical offsets or misalignment in your system and the bearings can't handle it, that uh, will definitely fail your bearings. Um, also, preload the bearings. Like, if you look at the bearings on your screen, preloading the bearings uh, too much in one direction or the other could potentially fail your bearings very early. Now, there's um, rotary bearings that can handle misalignment. So, typically, like a spherical roller bearing will handle misalignment on its own dynamically. Uh, uh, a mounted bearing that is uh, self aligning will rotate the the whole outer race within the housing, and that can handle some misalignment as well. In terms of linear bearings, uh, they're a little bit more precise. Um, a ball bearing can handle a little bit more misalignment than a roller bearing, but it's very important to watch your, <clears throat> your flatness, your parallel, parallelism, your height vertical offsets. And if you have a short stroke, then uh, that that's two and a half times. If your stroke is not two and a half times the length of the runner block, it's considered a short stroke situation. And I just stole Ty's slide you, accidentally. You just stole all I'm my. Sorry, fingers. man. I got so excited. I you just I kept stole my last slide. slide. You, stole, you stole my last slide since I stole your last slide. Okay. Oh, I'm going to steal this one. Well, I yeah, didn't you steal this one. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Morel is not just a distributor. Uh, we do have engineering staff available uh, to uh, help you through any kind of uh, application. You'll see some of our tools on the screen there. Uh, so we use Lens Select uh, for our motion, and then we also have a linear motion designer for our bearings and ball screw uh, sizing. Uh, we do have online configurators uh, that you can get a drawing right away on whatever you're designing. Uh, typically, it'll come in an email form from the factory if it's a configured part. Um, and then we also have, like we, Sean also mentioned, we also have the linear rails already on our website. You, you can download, you don't have to configure them. Um, but we also have an undersize to size the uh, motor and drives uh, also. So, there we go. Yeah. Thank you, Sean and Ty, for a very interesting presentation. Um, now it looks like we have a few questions. Um, the first one is, what does lubed for life actually mean? This is well, my question. Are you, are you going to answer this question, Ty? I, well, I can, I can take it. Uh, I kind of mentioned it during the presentation. Um, so um, a loop for life uh, is is uh, used a lot in the industry. What that means um, for us is that uh, if you calculate the meters traveled um, in, in your application, and that's, tip, that's based on the machine rate, uh, and then the expected life of the machine, uh, if it is less than the Rex Roth profile rail rating of tw 20 million meters, then it is a loop for life. You don't have to get an automated lube system to do it. So it's a calculation done on the front end and we'll help you do that calculation and, and determine if you do need a lube system or not. So that's what lube for life means. Okay, unfortunately we're running out of time. So if we didn't get to your question today, I apologize and we'll follow up with you separately. Um, but thank you again to Sean and Ty for answering those questions. And thank you all for joining us online this morning to discuss their <laughs> Uh, feel free to contact Sean or Ty for support with your linear bearing systems. Also, join us for part two next month where Sean and Ty will discuss how to design linear systems to handle offsets and why bearing alignment is so important. Thank you again for attending, understanding, and achieving longer bearing life by Morel Group. Thank you and have a great day.